money can really be a touchy subject, y'all. Like when it comes to money, there's a whole lot of baggage and nuance and implication. When we talk about money, there's this air of don't say this or don't say that because you may be perceived as being rude or boastful or low class or my least favorite is wasteful. Like (laughs) that's just so filled with judgment. But today I'm sharing about why I uh, chose to invest in hiring a financial coach last year and what that's meant for me since, because I want to share a little bit with you about my experience with money and how that is making a difference inside of my life and business right now. Welcome to the Hennapreneur Podcast, the exclusive podcast of its kind, dedicated to giving you an honest look at the realities of making a living as a henna professional. I'm your host, Chelsea Stevenson, a tea-loving, shoe-collecting mother of three in constant search for the most poppin' pair of earrings and the perfect shade of red lipstick. I'm also a professional henna artist and business strategist who went from barely being able to piece together a fluid design to being the owner of the most celebrated henna boutique in my city. I'm on a mission to help henna professionals to harness their skills and grow vibrant, profitable businesses that they absolutely love. If you want to make more money with your art, you are definitely in the right place. Let's get to it. Hey, hey, Hennapreneurs. So today I'm sharing with you about my experience with money, specifically through the lens of a big investment that I made last year. I decided it towards the, what was, it would have been the third quarter. Yeah, so it was towards the end of the year. It was in the third quarter uh, of 2020. I made the decision to invest in hiring a financial coach. And this was something that, if you would have asked me if I'd ever consider... <laughs> Hiring a financial coach, I probably would have laughed you out of town. Like, that's not something that had ever been on the horizon for me. It's not something that I'd even really given much thought to until last year. And so I want to share with you guys about what that experience was like for me and what got me there and how things are with that now after having completed my my program with her. And then... Yeah, like I feel like there's a lot of maybe golden nuggets in this in this little chat. Let me set the stage for you, okay? So that we're all having this clear baseline of what how I even got here, okay? Prior to so you guys know I've been in business since 2011. I went full-time in 2014 and I always to be com- to be honest, I've always felt confident in my my bookkeeping skills for my business. As it relates to the business itself, I have never wavered. Like I've never felt like, ooh, I don't know what I'm doing. Like that part has always been clutch. But I've never felt, oh gosh, this is so vulnerable. <laughs> I've never felt that same, that same sense of confidence as it relates to my personal finances. Okay. For context, so like my professional experience prior to opening a business was in social work. But what many people don't know about me is that before I was a social worker, I actually uh, worked in the restaurant industry. I managed a restaurant. I was a GM for a particular restaurant for some years. And my experience, my professional experiences meant that I was very familiar with with cash flow, with sales reporting, with expense management, with inventory, with having a profit and loss. Like those were things that were constantly a part of my workload. And so I was responsible for how well my restaurant did financially. And that meant maintaining payroll and like all of the things, all of the things that are relative to how a business operates from a financial perspective. I My eyes were on those numbers because I was personally responsible for those numbers. And at the end of each month, I would have a meeting with the supervisor or in some cases, I'd have a meeting with the owner where I would have to go over those those numbers line item by line item and explain what happened here or what's going on there and how I might have a suggestion for something that we could do differently or where I dropped the ball perhaps and how I was going to fix it. Like I was very familiar with cash flow and I was very familiar with money and finance as it relates to business. But I did not have experience like that in my personal life at all. So for me and my personal experience, like I... As I stepped into adulthood, right, and and I should preface this by saying I, okay, so I graduated high school like two, 
I was basically I was 14. I turned 15 like two weeks before I graduated. And so because I graduated high school so early while I was in my senior year, I also was dual enrolled in university. So like I'm doing high school and I'm doing university and then I graduate and then I go into university full time. I'm in university and I'm running the restaurant. And I was I ran the restaurant for I ran, I was in restaurant management for years. But it started from that actually being my first job. I started working in the restaurant at 14 and just quickly made my way up through the ranks until I got into upper management because I was a, I was an overperformer. I was a top performer. I've always had that characteristic about me. And yeah, so to give you some context, I came out of high school, went into university, started managing this this restaurant. I'm in university and I am my my as I was approaching my 18th birthday, my family moves. And so at that point, now I'm totally financially independent and I didn't have a clue what I was doing. Prior to that, I I had like a weird sort of experience around money. My son's, my eldest, my son's father and I had somewhat shared finances. We had like we rented a, a room and we maintained ourselves in that way. And then when my family left, they left, my mother owned a home. And so when she left the home to me to rent, and so we moved from that the other places we were renting, we moved in, we moved over into my mother's home and rented that from her. And it was not a good experience. Like it was not a good experience. I did not have personal financial literacy. I, I was, and, and I was getting paid good money at the time, like for someone of my age with no children, with no real responsibility, the salary that I was making as a GM should have been enough to cover all of the things and I should not have been experiencing the difficulty that I was having, but I just didn't know. I literally didn't know. And so as I moved on in life and obviously I moved on to have, to get married to to my now husband, went on to have kids, went on to, moved into social work, moved from the restaurant industry into the social work and then into owning my own business. Like I, my experiences grew and from a business perspective, I felt really comfortable. Like I I never had a, a time or space inside of my business. Even literally when I first started my business, I started my business and hit green, like I hit profit. I, I was bringing money in. I was in the black like immediately because I knew how to work those numbers in that in that arena. But from a personal side, on the personal side, I did not feel at all that I was capable. I was totally unconfident. I didn't know the things. I didn't know the things. And so I was making this money and I like floating by with it. Like I was making this money and I was maintaining my business and I was maintaining my bills for the household. And like, that was fine. I wasn't short I was like things were working cash flow was working because of because I understood that those sorts of uh, of pieces but I just I never had a savings I constantly felt like I had to check my account before making a purchase like I I just didn't have I didn't have the know-how on the personal side and and so basically what happened is last year I reached a place where I was like I can't keep faking this like I need some guidance and I had to be really non-judgmental with myself because for me, I felt like I was living two separate identities. Inside of my business, I'm having you know this great success and my business is making this wonderful revenue and things are going great. And then like on the personal side, I'm like looking at my accounts. I'm like, what are you, where is it going? Like literally that's what, what I was, <laughs> that's exactly what I was dealing with. I realized last year, 2020, I realized that I was making more money than I had ever made before. My business was performing beautifully, but I felt like if I moved any amount of that money over into my personal accounts, it would just disappear. Like it would just vanish into thin air. And I didn't know why or how, like I couldn't find a rhyme or reason to it. And I didn't know how to make the connection. I feel like this was the other piece. I didn't feel like I knew how to make the connection between my business's finances and my personal finances in a healthy way. Like I didn't know what to do with the money once I paid myself out of my business, which that's a whole nother thing. Like you really should, as you're building your business, you like you want to build it in such a way that you're paying yourself a salary and all those things. Like that's super important. But for me, there I was like, I'm paying myself and then it was gone. Like then, 
Then what? And and so what it came down to was I ran a report. Actually, what it came down to was I ran a report after. So after obviously for the beginning portion of, of 2020, my business was closed down just with the coronavirus lockdowns and so forth. And when I reopened with a massive boom, like it was a boom and I did not, I wasn't expecting that. And I had my first five figure months, plural, inside of the pandemic after reopening my business. And I didn't, at that point, when I ran the numbers and I saw them for what they were, I was super excited first, obviously. I'm super excited. I'm like, yes, I'm making bank. Also terrified <laughs> because I, and literally I would have the, I ha- would have the money from my, this revenue that I was generating inside of my business. And I would just leave it in the account. Like I would just leave it in my business accounts because I'm like, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to transfer that over to my personal. Like I don't trust myself to, to know what to do with this. And that's what it came down to. I didn't know what I didn't know. And I had to coach myself through why that was okay. What happened, there was an instance where I was homeschooling my daughter. I was working on a particular activity with my daughter, my my middle daughter, my six-year-old. And she was struggling with some reading, like this con- these concepts and in, in some reading that we were doing. And my daughter is very much like me. She is, that one specifically, she's like me times 10, both in the best traits about me and the worst traits about me. <laughs> This one is not one of the greatest. She is, she's very proud. She's very proud, and which is a great thing. I, I love for her to be proud in herself and of herself. But of course, pride can sometimes also be a deterrent. It can get in our, it can cause us to get in our own ways because our pride will keep us from asking for the help that we need. And so I can see that she's having this challenge reading. And at the same time, she doesn't want to ask for help because her pride. And I don't want to overstep boundaries and hurt her pride and then cause her to shut down further right and so um I kind of pull her aside and I told her you know baby I I I don't know if I don't know if what I'm gonna say is helpful to you but I want to tell you something that that maybe you didn't know and she's like you know what and she's rolling her eyes the whole night and I told her sometimes when we're learning something new it can be really scary because we feel like We might look stupid or people might think badly of us or that we are not good enough or we can just feel lots of different things and none of those things maybe feel good to us at the time. And so because we're struggling with learning that new information or those new skills, we, instead of trying to to do it, we just give up and we throw up our hands. But what's interesting is, In order to learn, you must not know. Like if you're going to learn something, you can't already know it. That is the requirement for learning. That is the definition of learning, going from a place of not knowing to a place of knowing. And and so, of course, I'm talking to her about this in the context of her reading. And as I was speaking to her, I was hearing my own words and I was like, oh, Lord, Chelsea, like get your life. (laughs) And so we finish up her schoolwork and whatnot. And I take to my professional networks and I'm like, who who do I know? Who do I know who is either working as a financial coach or has access to a financial coach? Actually, to be completely honest, that wasn't even the question that I asked. The question that I asked was. I'm looking for someone to help me with my finances and I don't even know what this type of person is. Can someone please tell me what type of person I'm looking for? I need someone who can help me do X, Y, and Z. I literally, you guys, I'm sharing this with you because, and and this is vulnerable and this is like risking embarrassment or whatever. I don't care because you know what? I didn't come out of the womb knowing everything and likely you did not either. And I I had to put myself out there and be willing to feel embarrassed when asking the question. But I'm like, if I don't ask the question, I'm never going to get the answer. I didn't even know what type of person I was looking for. Because I, I didn't have the knowledge or the context or the, the knowing, the literacy to be able to express my needs. That's how far I, that's how far I, uh, in I was, right? 
and and that's normal. That's okay. That's there's nothing wrong with that. And I think that it's so important for us to give ourselves grace when we don't know a thing, because when that happens, you have two choices. You can stay there and continue to not know the things <laughs> or alternatively, you can choose. You can choose to continue to learn. You can choose to push yourself and pushing yourself. You can find the answers. So literally, I, I go to my professional networks and I, I reached out to a handful of friends and I reached out to a group of women that I'm connected with. And I said, y'all, who am I even looking for? Am I looking for like a financial analyst? Am I looking for a strategist of some sort? Am I looking for a money coach? I don't need I know that I have like I don't need a bookkeeper. I know that part. I need to find someone who's going to help me clearly understand the, the financial health of my personal goal, like my personal accounts and how to strategize to reach my personal goals. Because right now I like I'm handling money fine over here inside of my business. But once it comes over into this personal zone, like I don't know, I don't know what I don't know. And in asking that question, which was embarrassing to me at the time to ask, But once I asked that question, I got all sorts of responses and I got all sorts of suggestions and it was really helpful for me. And so I spoke to a handful of different people. I interviewed a handful of different people. Finally, I settled on hiring one particular woman who really she was excellent. She my experience with her was really great, but I wouldn't have even gotten there had I not remembered or had I not spoken those words to my daughter and had to take a dose of my own advice that in order to learn, you must not know. <laughs> right. So I, I, I ultimately, I made the investment. I chose to, to work with her. I hired her on, I went through a program with her and I have to tell you the results for me have been amazing. Right. Like I feel so much more in control of my finances than I ever have before, because now I have systems for my money. Investing and getting help meant that I could better make decisions in my finances because I didn't feel like I was kicking around ideas in the dark. Like now I know exactly what to do with my money. It goes through its processes on the business side as normal. But then once it reaches my personal checking account, I now have a plan for what happens to it when it's there too. And that's the, this is the first time that I've ever had that experience in my adult life. Because again, coming up, financial literacy was not a thing that was taught to me. And because I became independent very early on in in my not even adulthood in my teens I didn't have I didn't have those lessons and so I'm learning them right there are there are things that I'm still learning today and that feels really good honestly it feels really good and now I feel open I'm open to what I don't know obviously in working with her I didn't learn everything there is to know about personal finances right like I'm still no expert in personal finance that's not but I also don't claim to be right there's still so much to learn and I'm excited to learn it now because I feel confident and capable of navigating those conversations whereas before I didn't even feel like I spoke the language so like with this new knowledge and this new sense of empowerment in place I'm no longer overwhelmed by money like I'm excited by it now And I'm hopeful to make, I like, I'm shy to even say this here on the podcast, but I'm hopeful to make some pretty significant purchases in 2021, purchases that I would have not ever dared to think about making this time last year, much less trying, trying or considering doing that alone, doing that without my husband, without a co-signer, without like doing that on just by myself on the strength of my own personal finances. And I, I feel excited about that because I know that I'm capable. I know that I now have the resources and I have the support that's available to me to make it happen, that support that I need. And that feels really good. So why am I sharing all of this with you? I'm opening myself up to all sorts of, I don't know, like I have no idea how this is going to land, if there's going to be criticism, if this is going to resonate with you. Hopefully it resonates with you and you can see yourself in my story. If not, that's okay too. But I share this for the person who can see themselves in my story. And for you, I've got some advice. Don't be afraid to invest in the ways that you need to in order to increase your chances of success. Okay, I'm going to repeat that. Don't be afraid to invest in the ways that you need in order to increase your chances of success. I have held for myself a story about my ability to manage money for years. And that story did not serve me. Literally my entire adult life, I have felt like I can totally hold it together with the money in my business. But I would be a failure 
<laughs> as soon as it hit my personal account. And that did not serve me at all. Bringing in someone else's expertise and experience was all it took to help me to unpack that and to rewrite that story. And for the first time in my life, I feel so open and I feel so excited and willing to receive and prepare. That's an even better word. I feel so prepared to receive what what abundance I, I'm creating for myself through the hard work that I'm doing every single day. And for you, as you consider your own experience, I want you to ask yourself, where are you holding yourself back when perhaps just investing in the right help that you need is all it would take to yield the breakthrough that you're looking for? You don't have to have the answers to everything. You don't have to know everything. You just have to know where to go to find those answers. And investing in expert guidance is a great way for you to do that, okay? You are deserving of that. And so I want to encourage you to do it. And that's like, that's the takeaway. If you hear nothing else from me today, please hear that. You are deserving of it. So invest where it benefits you. Invest in those things that are in alignment with where you want to go and who you want to be because you are worth it. You're deserving of it. All right. I'll talk to you guys next time. I've got a serious question for you. Are you ready to stop playing small with your art and to take your business to the next level? Are you tired of feeling like you're doing it all to grow your business, but you just aren't seeing the results and the success that you're looking for? Perhaps you've got clients here and there, but you know inside that your potential expands far beyond what your business is generating today. You may know that you're a solid artist, but you can't seem to crack the code on the business side of things. And you may find yourself wondering, what gives? If any of this sounds like you, listen up, because I've got some really great news for you. I've got a free on-demand masterclass called Five Figure Foundations, where I'll teach you my framework for how to build a profitable henna business. During the masterclass, you'll learn how to position your henna business for success, even if you don't have any background in practical business management. You're gonna learn the critical steps you need to take in order to get your budding business started off or to correct the broken one that's burning you out. You're gonna learn why you need systems, not feelings, to make more money and to expand your business. We're gonna get real clear, real fast about how you're likely getting in your own way right now and how you can remove the frustrations that are holding you back. I'm also gonna share my tried and true framework for establishing a profitable, sustainable business. And I'm gonna tell you all about how my students are continuing to grow their businesses and celebrating some pretty big wins in the process, even through those everyday challenges that you might expect, like juggling work and home life, and even those massive challenges that you might have never seen coming, like navigating a pandemic while being a business owner. At the end of the masterclass, you'll no longer be in the dark. You'll know exactly what to do and what to avoid to build a solid foundation for your own profitable henna business. To register for the masterclass and to watch it instantly on demand, visit hennapreneur.com foundations.